Lucas Tronch was born on April 18th, 1999 to parents Eric and Natalie Tronch in southern France. Both Eric and Natalie worked as engineers with the French Alternative Energy and Atomic Energies Commission at Marcoule Nuclear Site. The couple brought up their family in bagnoles sur seize in the Guard Department of Southern France. Lucas was the middle of three children, with an elder brother named Valentin and a younger brother named Arthur. Lucas is described as being shy, kind, helpful and happy, and he adored animals and the outdoors. By 2015, the 15-year-old was in his first year at the Lycée Albert Einstein School in his hometown of bagnoles sur seize he had a good group of friends and performed very well in his classes, having a desire to one day become a vet. Lucas was also very active, enjoying attending the likes of swimming and badminton classes in his spare time, and he was very passionate about scouting, having been a part of his local scout troop for a number of years by this point. Lucas was not very active on the more popular social media platforms such as Twitter and Facebook, but he was often on Snapchat, sending snaps to his friends. On Wednesday the 18th of March 2015 at approximately 5.10pm, Lucas's elder brother, 17-year-old Valentin, told his younger brother that it was time to leave their home to catch the bus to their swimming lessons that night in Laudin Laudoise. Before leaving towards the bus stop on their scooters, which was about a 20-minute walk away, Lucas told Valentin that he should go ahead to the bus stop himself whilst the teen locked up the house before joining him. Only Lucas never arrived. At around 5.30pm, Valentin tried to contact his brother by calling him, but Lucas's phone had been switched off at approximately 5.14, just minutes before he locked up and left the Tonche residence. At around 6pm, the boy's mother Natalie returned home from work with her youngest son, nine-year-old Arthur. Thinking that Valentin and Lucas were still at the pool, Natalie carried out some household chores before heading to the swimming pool to collect her elder sons at approximately 8pm, but only Valentin was there. Valentin told his mother that Lucas had failed to show up at the bus stop and he assumed that his brother decided to stay at home. Only Natalie told her eldest son that Lucas was not there. Worried that Lucas might have suffered an accident of some kind, Natalie contacted nearby accident and emergency rooms in case her son was there receiving any treatment, but he wasn't. Natalie then contacted a number of Lucas's friends in order to trace her 15-year-old son, but nobody had seen him. For Lucas just to vanish like this was completely out of character, so as a result, Natalie contacted police and immediately filed a missing persons report. Eric was informed of his son's disappearance shortly after he returned home from work at approximately 11pm. French police immediately opened an investigation into Lucas's disappearance shortly after being contacted by his mother and after a week of no news, the case was taken on by the SRPJ, the Montpellier Original Judicial Police Service and the OCRVP. Numerous searches were conducted in the locality with search teams and volunteers scouring the hills, cliffs and paths within a four kilometre radius of the Tronche home. The River Says was also searched and the likes of helicopters, search dogs and search and rescue teams aided in the search for Lucas, totalling around 1,500 people being involved but no trace of the boy was found. His picture and information was posted on several social media platforms and a number of French public figures appealed to the public for information. The Tronche parents also appeared on a number of television programmes following their son's disappearance in order to raise awareness of his case. 
Lucas was not the kind of person to just run away. According to his family, he had absolutely no obvious reasons to do so. He wasn't experiencing any family problems. On the contrary, he was very close to his family, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary at school either. It was deemed possible at the time that Lucas may have left of his own accord, for reasons still unestablished, or that he had been abducted after leaving his home. Authorities did rule out that Lucas had taken his own life, and ruled out the possibility that he had fled to either fight for or against the Islamic State in the Middle East. As the investigation into Lucas's disappearance continued, police questioned his family, friends, teachers and sports coaches extensively, but unfortunately nothing of significance came to light. Bus drivers who were also in the vicinity that day were also questioned, but to no avail. Lucas's room was subsequently searched for clues, and it appeared that he had actually left the house without his swimming gear. He also left without his ID and his scooter, but he did leave with a rucksack containing very few items of significance. The 15-year-old, who knew a lot about the outdoors and survival, did not take any cash with him, nor any sort of sleeping bag or shelter, or even a knife. If Lucas had been planning to leave home, he would have known to take such items to survive in the wilderness. The true intentions as to why Lucas left his home remain unclear. Whilst searching of Lucas's bedroom, authorities seized his laptop and his tablet in order to find some clues, but once again their efforts yielded nothing of significance. They did find that his mobile phone showed Snapchat being used several times on the day in question. After being granted permission from US authorities to access Lucas's conversations on the app, once again, nothing suspicious or out of the ordinary was found. It is believed, however, that Lucas may have spoken to someone via the Snapchat app and intended on perhaps meeting this individual or group of people. A number of witnesses came forward to police claiming to have seen Lucas on the day he vanished. One female witness claimed to have seen the 15-year-old sometime between 5.15 and 5.30pm on Chamon du Saldunin, heading in the opposite direction of the swimming pool towards the vineyards. Another woman came forward claiming on March 19th, the following day, that she saw a teenager crossing a yard near to her farm at around midday, a male wearing a burgundy down jacket, similar to one Lucas was wearing when he disappeared. This sighting was actually not far from the previous day's sighting, heading towards the vineyards. After informing police of this alleged sighting, authorities arrived on the farm with sniffer dogs, who followed the scent for approximately one kilometre north before stopping dead in its tracks. Nothing was found. Later the same day, March 19th, as a group of volunteers were out searching for Lucas, a family friend of the Taunches saw what appeared to be a silhouette of a young person sitting at the top of a nearby hill at around 6.30pm. By this point, it was dusk. The family friend, Rashid Gamery, took a photograph of the strange person, but unfortunately it was far too grainy to make out who the individual was, and to this day we still don't know who the person was. Rashid then began calling out Lucas's name numerous times, however the silhouette on the hill got to their feet and simply walked away. Four days later, on March 23rd, at around 10.30am, more volunteers witnessed this strange silhouette standing on the hills of Saint-Gervais. The person standing there, watching over the walkers in the nearby vineyard. This person was once again unidentifiable, but was wearing dark clothing, according to some of the witnesses. Volunteers approached the silhouette, but by the time they actually reached the spot where the person had been standing, they were gone, having disappeared into the woods. 
According to one source, however, one of the search dogs left markings at this particular point, suggesting that this unidentified person could have been Lucas Tonch. Around a week later, another witness came forward to the authorities, a 25-year-old motorcyclist who claims to have seen Lucas on the afternoon of the 23rd of March riding his bike through a neighbouring village. According to this witness, Lucas was wearing a backpack and walking along a track towards a hamlet called Es Brezun, heading in the direction of a hill. The biker's description of Lucas was very accurate, so this new lead seemed promising. Following this witness testimony, police on the ground and in the helicopter scoured the area for clues, once again with search dogs by their sides, but nothing of significance was found. A father and a daughter also came forward to police claiming to have seen someone matching Lucas's description on March 28th at the Cultura du Ponte store in Vaucluse. According to them, Lucas was in the company of an older female between the ages of 45 and 50 years old. Despite authorities once again processing these leads, nothing came of it. Not long after Lucas's disappearance, forensic investigators tried to look for any traces of blood in the Tonch home. They used a product called Luminol, which reacts to the presence of blood, and investigators found what appeared to be traces of blood on the carpet by Lucas's bed, and they tried to determine whether the Luminol had definitively revealed blood or whether the product was just reacting to a day-to-day -day household product. But unfortunately, the results of this test has never been revealed to the public, despite renewed testing occurring in May 2017. Around seven or so months following Lucas's disappearance in October of 2015, the Tranche family started to receive strange anonymous letters, which informed Eric and Natalie that, quote, Lucas is fine, don't worry. Approximately 11 letters were sent to the Tonche residence over the following nine months until investigators reviewed CCTV footage at the sorting office where one of the letters had been posted on July 12, 2016. As it turned out, however, the sender of these letters was a 57-year-old mythomaniac from Valence who had absolutely nothing to do with Lucas's disappearance. In October 2017, the man was sentenced to one year in prison with a further year suspended. In December 2016, French police released a composite sketch of a witness seen near to the Tranche residence on the day that Lucas disappeared, with the sketch being modified slightly in September the following year in order to have a more accurate depiction of this individual. Who this individual was, however, remains unknown. Authorities investigating Lucas's disappearance found some striking similarities to his case and another missing person, 16-year-old Antoine Zoya, in March of 2016. Antoine was similar to Lucas in a number of ways, especially in regards to personality. Antoine disappeared after buying cigarettes from a local tobacconist. Police tried to establish a solid link between the two cases, as both were of a similar age, similar personality, and lived just 38 miles apart. However, in October of 2018, Antoine's skeletal remains were found hanging in a remote woodland near Clarensac, where he vanished. No foul play is suspected. In January of 2018, authorities investigated another possible lead in this case. They believed that a man named Nordal Lalande, who was the main suspect in the disappearance of Mylis de Arojo, an eight-year-old girl who disappeared in Chambly, southern eastern France, was perhaps linked to Lucas's disappearance. 
Lalande was a regular visitor to the guard department, and he even had relatives near Lucas's hometown of Bagnol sur Cez. However, after authorities looked into Lalande's phone records, he could be placed more than 100 miles away from where Lucas disappeared on March 18th of 2015. He was subsequently ruled out as being involved in the teen's disappearance. As for Mylise de Arojo, her body was found on February 14th of 2018, after Lalande led authorities to where he disposed of her remains. In October of 2018, the witness who had been seen near to the bus stop on the day Lucas vanished was finally located and taken in for questioning, but unfortunately nothing could link this male individual to Lucas. The Tranche family, despite their heartache, never gave up hope that someday Lucas would come home. Mass gatherings took place over the years on the anniversary of Lucas's disappearance in an effort to raise awareness of his case. Unfortunately, Lucas's case subsequently went cold. That was until June of 2021, when on the 24th and 25th, some bones and pieces of clothing were found in Bagnol sur Cez that were suspected to have belonged to missing boy Lucas Tronche. DNA and genetic testing were performed on the bones and the pieces of clothing, which confirmed that the remains did indeed belong to 15 year old Lucas Tronch. Lucas was known to be very passionate about geology and he regularly went to this particular area to collect stones. Rather strangely, Lucas's cause of death has not been determined, but the possibilities include an accidental fall, a deliberate act of throwing oneself into the void, or an altercation, according to French police. The truth as to what happened on the day Lucas disappeared and the events following his disappearance remain unknown. We don't know how Lucas met his end or why. We can only hope that someday the Tronch family will get the answers they so desperately need. Lucas was a happy and healthy teenager. For him to have passed away in such mysterious circumstances certainly needs some more reviewing by authorities. Was Lucas the victim of foul play? Did he die as a result of an altercation with somebody or a group of people? Or did something extraordinary happen to him that resulted in his premature death at just the tender age of 15?